Let me guess, this time of year, you, I know I am, feeling a little stuck. Feeling like, not to be negative, but you're on the precipice of change, but you're kind of in this limbo land right now. It could be for a variety of reasons. You could have moved countries, cities, climates. You could have gotten pregnant or just had a baby. You could have gotten divorced, married, or you're in the process of falling in or out of love. All of these things affect how we feel and how we dress and how we show up. And during these transformational moments in our lives, which we need to fully embrace because that's why we're here. We're here to evolve and grow and change, right? Your style needs to do the same and move along with you on this journey. But if you are stuck in a style rut, that can be incredibly incongruent with where you're trying to go in life and where you still seem to be appearing like you are. So don't worry, I got you. Here are 10 foolproof, easy, practical, achievable, quick tips to immediately transform your style, update your look, and break you out of whatever rut you feel like you might be in right now. Because no matter how much or little you think you have, we all can have some style. Welcome, my name is Moshe Lundstrom Halbert and I'm a fashion journalist and style expert. And I truly believe that what you wear is self-care. This show and channel, we're here on YouTube and also available in podcast form, is all about celebrating the evolution of your personal style. Together, we're gonna to discuss all matters of fashion and style and really help you find yours. And I believe in order to do that, we really need to forget the trends, lose the logos, burn the chinos, whatever chinos symbolize to you. To me, they kind of symbolize the banality of corporate America and just break the damn rules. It's time to experiment and evolve, to wear your clothes, not the other way around. So if that interests you, please go ahead and like and subscribe, follow along, and if you're listening, if I'm in your ears right now in the podcast form and you don't need these visual references, make sure you follow the podcast as well and you can leave comments and reviews so we can continue this dialogue and it might just inspire a future episode of Have Some Style. Okay, so let's dive into today's topic. 10 ways to immediately break you out of any style rut. Okay, my number one tip is you gotta get a haircut. You know I'm a big proponent of this. Nothing makes me feel just like I have more pep in my step, like I'm just more kind of freshened up than a haircut. I mean, I get my bangs cut every two weeks, whatever that means for you, what, however often you need to do it, but just that reminder to go to a salon, have a professional look at your face shape, look at your hair type and cultivate a haircut that really works for you and that you are able to style on the daily is a game changer. Even if it's just getting a trim, it doesn't have to be a massive chop, but just taking a moment to reconsider if your hair is working for you. I feel like I, I'm not this type of person, so it's tricky for me to relate, but people can get really attached to the length of their hair and Sometimes what I'll notice is when your hair is really long, it's kind of, it's covering you. It becomes a bit of like a curtain, a cloak, a cape. It can feel heavy. It can literally and metaphorically drag you down. Shortening your hair, getting rid of the dead ends and getting rid of your past can really help signal a spiritual change for you that you're ready to step into the new. And I think when we men, women, anyone get overly attached to the length of our hair because it's just like, you gotta remember, it does grow back. We're holding ourselves back because like I said, we are meant to grow and evolve and change. Our hair should do so as well. Even if you have a signature hairstyle or a hairstyle that you know you repeat again and again, you can still maintain that and get frequent haircuts. It's just, it's also a form of hygiene and self-respect to show yourself that you're worthy of taking that time out of your day, going to a salon and having a professional assess you and give you a great haircut. 
But I have to say, if you've had, you know, a death, a big move, or um, a breakup, maybe don't get the most dramatic spur of the moment haircut. You might regret that, but you can do something small or incremental that's just really going to freshen your look and put a spring in your step. I know that's how I feel after I got my bangs trimmed. I got my bangs trimmed today and I just felt so much better. I felt like I felt like I had more space in my brain because I cleared up some space on my forehead. I know that sounds crazy, but like it worked. It signaled a change for me. My second tip is give your eyewear a hard look. Just getting a new pair of shades, opticals, or sunglasses, or a hybrid like these Saint Laurent's that I recently got and I'm obsessed with because I can wear these inside or outside on a Zoom call, to the gym, at home when there's a glare coming in, one, I don't want to wear any makeup. It's just, it's completely changed my look. These kind of have like a bit of a 70s feel to them versus, you know, these white Bottega Venetas, which I also love and I feel like just immediately brighten up my face and my look, have this like fun retro spirit to them, transformational, right? And then you've got your everyday black shades, which I just updated. I'm always looking for a new black shade that feels fresh for the season. I love how these ones really elongate and lift with that cat eye shape. These are also Bottega Veneta. A little tip from me to you is that designer sunglasses are all made by like two to three of these Swiss and Italian factories, every designer brand. You do not need to buy them in store, in the department store or in the brand store. I never recommend doing that. What I do recommend is you can try them on, on store, in store, make sure that they suit your face shape. I have a very square face. So right here, I'm always trying to find sunglasses that are wide enough here for me and counteract that squareness. And then you take them off. Once you find ones you like, you look at the style name, you write it down and you take a photo of it. And then you search for that online on like these sites like Optica.net or Easy Contacts and they sell them for a fraction of the price, hundreds of dollars or less because it's, I mean, I love nice sunglasses. I love designer sunglasses, but the prices are ridiculous. It's plastic, you know, it shouldn't cost $500. That's insane. These are my husband's Saint Laurent blue light glasses, which I also love when I've got a Zoom meeting and I mean business and I just want to get in and out and I don't want to, you know, do a lot of makeup before, but I want to look pulled together. I just steal these from him because he has multiple pairs and they're a great frame. It's called the, if you're wondering, the SL402. They come in a bunch of different colors, but just like this wardrobe of sunglasses, really I find super, and eyewear in general, I just find super helpful for immediately updating your look. If you have an outfit that's just kind of ho-hum, basic pieces, you put on a shade that has a real point of view and perspective and you look like you do as well. And nobody's going to mess with you when you have the right shades on. You hear me? My third tip is get a new outfit. I'm talking head to toe, new outfit, one new outfit. You don't have to throw the baby out with the bath water and get a whole new closet, a whole new wardrobe. When you're feeling like you're in a rut, I would say baby steps. Start with one new outfit, one look that immediately signals to you a change, a new perspective. For me recently, I just cultivated this vision. I don't know where this came, I do know where this came from. I'll explain the references in a second, but I was craving a stirrup pant, which I'm wearing here now, stirrup pant, ivory tweed, got this lovely Anina Bing, blazer and a slingback heel. I got these gorgeous kind of sexy Chanel Saint Laurent slingbacks. Might sound excessive. These are all new pieces, but this one new outfit, I don't think I only got it last week. I've worn it like every other day. I needed that new press reset look. From there, I'm going to figure out multiple versions and variations on this. I can wear these same pants with different jackets. I can wear it with flats as opposed to the heels. I can switch up my accessories and jewelries and underpinnings. I was wearing, uh, I tried this outfit on also with like this sexy cutout bodysuit underneath for evening. That felt really great, but I just find one new look and invest in it. You can wear it over and over again. It might just be the key that you need to unlock 
your style and where it's meant to be and where it's going. And if you listen to what you're craving, kind of like, you know, what, what your instincts are telling you that you want on your body, you'll probably come up with a much better outfit than if you're coming from a place of looking at what everyone else is wearing and trends. So for instance, you'll see the look that I put together here. The stirrup legging was really inspired by the ski pants that my mom used to have in her collection in the eighties and the nineties. Also in the looks that like Audrey Hepburn and the Slim Aaron set used to wear in like Stad in the 60s. I've always loved a steer blagging. They remind me of like my childhood, but also these really glamorous references. And they're really comfortable, but I feel like they have a really strong point of view. The last time I've worn them um, consistently was for like one Paris fashion week. I was just all about like steer blaggings, a pointed shoe, and great coats. And I'm kind of back to that now it's a formula that I like. It's like comfortable, but a bit edgy and feels like it's the soup call of references that are very me. Like, what is that for you? What's that special combo that you love in the same way that, you know, you might go through a phase where like, you just want to eat the same thing for lunch every day or for breakfast. You just want the same thing again and again, lean into that. Make it the best version of that same thing, whatever it is. Repeat it again and again, but get something new head to toe. I give you full permission. Number four, get a new coat, a new form of outerwear, a new jacket, that new top coat, that new top layer. I always say with outerwear, that's why we started our brand Thermacota, is coats are the most important thing in your wardrobe. Coats and shoes, they're almost tied, but I would say coats are even more important. It's the first thing and last thing people see you in. Uh, a lot of things that we go to, we don't even take off our coat anymore and like check it. It really is your packaging, your wrapping. Like make sure that you're not just wrapping yourself in some generic black puffer. No, you're better than that. You deserve better. You need a coat that reflects your personality. My approach has always been, and I just find it a lot easier and more energizing is especially during the colder months, or if you're in a climate where you are wearing coats all the time, you can wear basic things underneath, comfortable things, simple layers, but you wear a fabulous top layer. It either is an interesting silhouette, it's an impactful color, it has a design flourish to it, or all three. Wear something show-stopping. Life is too short to wear boring coats that look like everyone else. Nothing depresses me more if when I look in a coat check and I see just a sea of these generic black coats. I love a black coat, but it's gotta be super chic, super interesting, super unique. You cannot walk around in the same coat as everyone else unless you're on some kind of Arctic expedition, then I will allow it. Otherwise, coats are really meant to be a form of expression. Approach it as such, update your coat wardrobe, inject some novelty in there, and it'll immediately change how people perceive you and react to you and make you feel better. And it also motivate you to get outside, which is something, let's be honest, we all need to do more of, especially in these kind of new year, winter month doldrums. Number five is organize and refine your beauty regimen. This is a great time of year to take stock of your makeup and get rid of a lot of things that you don't use anymore. A little trick that I have for this kind of curation is I like to keep like a candle holder, a candle that I've used and burnt through and then scoop out the wax um, and then, you know, put it through the dishwasher, run it under hot water to get everything out. And then I'll use it as a kind of makeup decanter. I keep that on my bathroom vanity and it's the perfect caddy for just the right amount of beauty products that I need for a fresh but new face. So I'll have my favorite new blush in there. I'll have a great new lip color, a lip liner, a highlighter, an eyeshadow, and a couple brushes and a concealer. And it's just like right there and easy. So I'm not rifling through my makeup bag every time I want to just brighten and enliven and add some radiance to my complexion. A little bit of makeup can go a long way. I'm not a full face kind of gal on the daily, but I'm trying to 
make a bit more time. I'm very good with my skincare. Not always as good with just taking the time to look and feel pretty. I feel like oftentimes, speaking for women here, women can kind of fall into two camps. Either they're really religious about their skincare and makeup is kind of sometimes a bit of an afterthought. That's how I am. Or they're crazy about makeup. They'll do the most intricate, defined, full-on looks all the time. But when it comes to skincare, like they sometimes even forget to wash their makeup off or God forbid they're washing them with those wipes. Trying to find that happy medium where you're taking really good care of your skin, but you're also making yourself look the best you can with makeup with a little bit every day can be a big help. And I find this little countertop candle caddy edit really helps me. Number six, wear one color head to toe. It can be very hard to put together outfits that have more than three colors. I usually like to stick to two max, but wearing one color head to toe is a great way to just cleanse the palette and have a cohesive approach to getting dressed. Oftentimes when we're in a style rut, it's because we're trying to do too many things. You know, women, can you relate? I feel like women, have a tendency to multitask and try to please everyone all at once at the expense of their own personal sanity. And this can definitely be reflected in your style. If you're trying to, you know, be comfortable, but also look sexy, but also be appropriate, but also be glamorous, but also all these things, just take a moment and ask yourself, what color do I feel like wearing? Pick that color. What is that vision? You feel like being in neutrals. You feel like being in brights. Wear one color head to toe. It's just, it's a very cohesive message to put forth and it makes it a lot easier because you have less options. It's like, if you're a vegetarian, you go to a restaurant, you look at a menu, it's a lot easier to decide what to order because you don't have as many options to choose from. Same thing can be said for refining and restricting your palate. If you don't want to wear one color head to toe, or it's not exactly possible, I would say limit yourself to three colors that are either analogous or kind of neutral max. But the rule of three is great. If you get into more than three colors, it is a lot harder to be cohesive and you're really breaking up your body as well. And the other thing is with one color head to toe, when I say one color, you can also do tone on tone. You know, you can have cream with white, with a more beige, and you can kind of count that as one color, but it's just like, one kind of cohesive vision, almost like a Monet, you know, like you squint and it all just sort of blends. Approach an outfit, approach your wardrobe that way, and it'll be a lot easier to get dressed. Number seven, it's going to sound a little cheesy. And you're going to have to trust me here, but I want you to write down three things that you like about yourself and your body. What a concept. We spend so much time scrutinizing what's wrong with us, what needs improvement, what isn't as good as it used to be, where have we gained weight, what looks wobbly, what looks wrinkly, what looks dimply, what looks hairy, what looks droopy, what looks blobby. Like, think of all the words women especially use to describe ourselves. We are the first to notice our own perceived flaws and point them out oftentimes in other women. It really is a sickness. It really is a toxic trait that is so ingrained in us. I mean, go to any beach, go to any pool, and you will see men with bellies and <laughs> three chins and scrawny little legs and gross little growths on their body walking around with such confidence and nonchalance. And then we look at women and it's just every line, every little thing we pick apart. What are three things that you actually really like about yourself? I'll go first, because this is very hard for me to do as well, but it's really important because when you focus on what you like about yourself, you can make choices accordingly with how you dress that highlight those features, okay? So here are three things I like about myself. I really like my calves 
and my shins and kind of like the lower part of my legs. I like my legs in general, but that lower part, I really like. My calves are nice and toned and I think they look great in heels and my ankles go in. It's just a nice silhouette. I like that about myself and I think they're gonna stand the test of time as I get older. This is still an area that I'm going to reveal and I wanna to continue to do so now. So anything that's like a length that's below my knee and really highlights that area and draws attention to a great shoe is a good look on me. I also really like this region, my décolletage, my shoulders, my collarbone, my clavicle. This part is very, it's a lovely proportion. I feel very pretty and feminine when I show this part of me. It draws the eye up as well. I like that part of me and that's good. That's a good thing. So I'm adding that to the list. And then what else do I like about myself? I like my arms. I think I'm always, always comfortable with highlighting and revealing my arms. And I like my waistline. Anything that goes in at the waist is a friend of mine. I love a nipped waist. I love that silhouette. As I'm getting older, I'm just trying to embrace and accept the fact that I am curvaceous, that um, I definitely widen significantly at the hips. And that's not a bad thing. That might not be the thing that I always like to highlight. My hips are usually an area that I'm self-conscious about, but instead of dwelling on that, because I don't know if, if you're anything like this, because I feel that I have wide hips, when I put on an outfit, I immediately look at my hips. That's the first thing. I don't look at the things that I like about myself first and foremost. And how mean is that, that I look at myself with that critical glare? that I immediately am drawn to the area of myself that I think is not as good as it could be, but genetically that's just where my bones are. It's not really gonna change. Like, why am I dwelling on the negative when there's actually more that I do like, but that I'm kind of blurring out? So what I really wanna do, and I'm kind of realizing this in real time here with you, and what I wanna encourage us all to do is, can we try to just correct that? Can that be our New Year's resolution? When you look at yourself, that you look first at the things that you like, and maybe by making this list of three things that you like about yourself, it'll be clear and give you a cognitive sig signal whenever you look in the mirror to first focus on what you do like, go straight to your collarbone, go straight to your butt, go straight to your biceps, go straight to your thighs, whatever it is, go straight to your abdominals, go straight to your breasts, what do you like about yourself? What do you think are your best features? Look at them first, because if you think it's your best feature, other people are probably noticing it as well. And that's where their eye is going to first as well. So why are you focusing first and foremost on the thing that you don't like? Why are we doing that to ourselves? Let's stop that right now, right now. Okay, number eight, depending on where you live, We've had different lockdown restrictions. We've had different openings and closures, depending on where you work, what you do. Are you in your home all the time? Are you having to be out in the world? Are you wearing a uniform? What have you? We all really need these days an excuse to dress up. And you need to make that excuse if one hasn't presented itself. Why? Because the act of dressing up, of, it's the same thing like I was saying with the haircut taking time for yourself to get ready, to really rise to the occasion, to try and look your best. It's kind of like cold therapy for your wardrobe or for your style. It's like that cold plunge. It, it's kind of painful, it's kind of uncomfortable, but it's not gonna last that long and you need to just enjoy it because you're gonna feel so much better afterwards when you have those pictures, let's say, or when you have those memories, from a time when you actually did go out or stayed in, but you got all dressed up and you really knocked it out of the park and put an effort into looking your best. If you would like more tips on how to approach dressing up, because it is really like a muscle and like our social skills these days, it probably needs some toning after COVID season three. You can see a past episode that I've done of Have Some Style that was my 20 definitive essential steps you must take whenever you're getting dressed up. And if you're looking for an excuse to get dressed up and you don't have an invite or you don't have an occasion, make spaghetti bolognese, make shrimp scampi, make Dover sole, make sushi, I don't know, make something at home that 
mix it in the occasion and get dressed up for that meal, even if it's just for you, yourself and I, or some friends or a partner. There's no excuse to just constantly be in casual wear or in work wear. Life is special. Make an occasion out of it. Don't wait for the occasion to arrive. Make yourself feel like you have somewhere to go and you have somewhere to be and that you're going to take the time and effort to really look your best and put on a dress or a suit or like a something slinky or something sparkly. Just get dressed up. It's good for you. Number nine, experiment with contrasts. Oftentimes when we're getting dressed, you have kind of sections in your wardrobe, right? Quite like a grocery store. It's like, you know, you have the sweat section, which is like maybe the bakery. And then you've got the produce section, which is maybe like your workout wear. And then you've got like the condiment section with the caviar, which is maybe your, you know, more evening wear, glamorous things. And then you've got like the chips and the snack aisle, and that's like your jeans and your t-shirts or whatnot, right? Bear with me with this metaphor. What I'm trying to say is we usually go to one area of our wardrobe and dress accordingly. Oftentimes it's because of an activity or it's because of a commitment, but the rules can kind of be thrown out the window these days. I mean, let's be honest, a lot of our activities and commitments, they're on Zoom, or they just don't have the same kind of emphasis around them that they used to. And what I want to encourage you to do is pull from different areas of your wardrobe and combine them together. Combine contrasts, combine denim with sequins, combine like a Nordic knit with a silk negligee, combine sweatpants with a really chic tailored blazer. Combine a sports bra with like something tweed. Like you're taking these opposing forces and you're putting them together in the same outfit. You're gonna find combinations in your wardrobe, in your existing wardrobe that break you out of a rut and then create fresh looks together. And my last tip, get a new bra or three. Get new underwear, get new something that goes underneath your clothes on your skin that's making you feel in touch with your body and a little lifted, a little contained, a little held up, a little held in, a little sexy, a little chic, a little slinky, a little slippery like a dolphin, whatever that is for you, get new underwear. It makes a really, really big difference. Even if nobody else is seeing it, but you, it does something internally. We should always be doing things that are just for us and not just for other people. And underwear is one of those things that can, you know, we wear all the time and it can lose its oomph after a while. I would say, I would reckon, I would put money on that 80% of what's currently in your lingerie, and I use that term loosely, drawer, should be thrown out. It's lost its life. RIP, all of that stuff get some new things. I'm going to leave some resources below underwear and lingerie brands that I really like. For underwear, I love, I only wear basically one type. It's by Intimissimi, which is this Italian brand. It's just really stretchy and seamless, kind of raw cut. It just never makes me feel like A, I'm wearing underwear or B, my underwear is um, in any way cutting in. I love just like black and white and nude bras, but have every variation of that. Also, if you are a woman who has breasts of a certain size, like having the right bra size as your breasts change, because most of us, they change, like it's supposed to be something crazy, like 12 times in your lifetime, you've probably got a lot of things in there that A, don't fit, or B, don't really offer you the type of support that you currently need. And C, like I wear different bras depending on, you know, the shirts that I'm wearing. Right now I'm actually wearing a Skims bra that I quite like, but just having a selection of lingerie to switch it up how you feel internally, it's your own little thing, but it changes how your clothes lay as well. Oftentimes too, like having the right foundation garments is what allows us to feel more confident in our clothes when we are going out, when we are dressing up. I discuss this again in my 20 steps to dressing up video in depth. So be sure to watch that to get more tips and tricks when it comes to what goes on underneath. Okay. 
So that's all for this episode of Have Some Style. Thank you so much for sticking with me here. I hope that I inspired a little sea change that you might be able to take in your life right now immediately that's going to break you out of a rut, make you look at yourself a little bit differently. If you can take one thing away from this video, if you can take one thing away from this podcast, of course, I want it to be the tip about how you look at yourself. I want us all, I'm going to make a commitment right here and now that this is something I'm going to work on. When I look in the mirror, I am not going to look first and foremost at my hips. I am going to look at my gorgeous decolletage and my killer calves. And I'm committed to doing that for the foreseeable future to break out of this pattern of feeling bad about one little thing about myself, as opposed to celebrating all the things that are great. And I want you to do the same because life is too short to be stuck in these negative thought patterns or wardrobe ruts. Even if you're going to wear the same outfit every day as I've been doing lately, make sure it's amazing. Make sure you love your shoes. Make sure you feel really fierce and like nobody can mess with you in your sunglasses. Make sure that you're switching it up every now and then. The simple act of just changing your shoes can really change your mindset. You know, make sure that you are continually open to adapting and evolving your style and getting a haircut because none of this will work. None of your wardrobe improvements will make any difference if nobody can see your clothes and your face and your neckline because it's just covered in hair. So that's my final tip for you. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Have Some Style. And if you liked what you heard, please let me know what you'd like to hear more of because I am really excited for all the interviews and tips and tricks and insights that I will be sharing in 2022 if I can only figure out what to wear. Take care, everyone.